Welcome, welcome. Welcome to A Word with Kelly Scott Reed. Today we're here with Sara Chansakar. Um, she is an Indian American writer, authors of more, author of Morsels of Purple, as well as her latest release, Skin Over Milk. Welcome, welcome to the show. Hey, Kelly. So good to see you. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And, and thanks for reaching out. You know, it was, uh, we put these um, interviews out because we really want the writing community to get to know different authors. Uh, we find that when we ask these questions, people get something out of it. They connect with the, the author. Um, they find out something new about themselves and their process. So I really appreciate you doing this, uh, actually for the writing community in general. It's, it's great, thank you. So first of all, um, I just have a couple of questions and I sent them to you prior and we're gonna kind of go off topic most likely uh, a little bit at a time. Um, but you know, when did you realize uh, first that language had power? Um, uh, when I was a child, I was a reader. I didn't write that time. I didn't even think of writing, but I have always been a reader. So I used to read a lot of books and uh, whatever was available at the school library, you know, um, Nancy Drew Mysteries, Agatha, Agatha Christie, and all those books I used to read. And um, sometimes I used, just used to be, get so lost uh, in, the, in the books that I didn't even care to have my lunch when, uh, you know, coming after uh, coming from school. I'm like, yeah, there's something about, uh, you know, these uh, books. And, uh, and also my grandfather was a big influence on me because we used to listen to not English, but Urdu Ghazal. So that's a, a totally different language. And he used to translate uh, the poetry and used to point out that, you know, uh, the multiple meanings that poetry could take. So that was what really intrigued me that, you know, how many different ways a, a verse or a poem could be read. And that's when he and I used to discuss uh, those, uh, you know, uh, Urdu poetry. And that's when um, I just realized that writing can be, you know, it looks very linear and, you know, maybe just uh, the writer wants to put something out in the world, but the, the way the reader uh, construes it or sees it is totally different. And that's what intrigued me uh, the most about uh, writing and the power of words. Uh, that's really brings me back to one of the ways that I think that uh, words have power and meaning is that sometimes when I'm reading a poem or listening to a song, I'll start to interpret what I feel it says. And it's what it's saying to me. It hits you right in the heart the way you're supposed to, to, to get it. Um, but it hits everybody differently. And if there are times where my husband goes, that's not what that said or that means, but it is to him something completely different. That's really, totally. that's very interesting. And do you have, you know, any literary heroes or anyone that when you were younger or even now that you were looking at um, that inspired you? So my heroes are, are, are so many of them because, and they change with what I'm reading. So my latest hero will be, okay, I'm reading this book. So if I read, um, the, when I read The Secret Life of Bees, Sue Monk Kid was my hero. And what I do is then when I, when I find a hero, I'll read everything by that author. So I'll read everything, every single book by that author. And that doesn't diminish my charm that, you know, increases my respect and my admiration for them. And um, so she's one. And then when I read Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, that, that was when I got introduced to her work. And then I read everything by her. And uh, of course, uh, Ajumpa Lahiri, who is an Indian author, and the first time I read Name Sig, I like, oh my God, how can somebody write, someone write like that? And then I read all of her books. And uh, also Isabel Allende, I have, I'm a great fan of hers. When I read House of Spirits, I was just so intrigued. So yeah, I mean, uh, I don't have a constant, I, I have just so many uh, authors that, uh, writers that I admire and who are heroes to me. And uh, this list just keeps growing with all the books that I read. 
have you ever gone down that path with a writer that inspired you with like a first book? And then as you read their other things, it, it was the opposite. It didn't inspire that you had to let it go. You don't have to name names, but did that, <laughs> did that ever happen uh, with that, with how you do that? Yeah, I mean, uh, some books are like that, like some of the first books will be awesome. And then, and, you know, everybody is human, you know, you can't expect the second work of some, someone's, anyone's for a second work to just always exceed or the third work to, to always exceed the second one. So yeah, that has happened, but very rare. I, I would say just once, and I would rather not say who, but yeah, yeah it has happened to me <laughs> once. That's, uh, I, I think yeah, I'm like, you don't have to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, now, when you write, does it energize or does it drain you? Is this something that, that you come out and you're very excited? I tend to be energized by my writing. and But sometimes it's like a download of emotion and a download of so much energy um, put into the writing. How, how does it affect you? So um, yeah, it depends on what I'm writing. So if I'm writing something light and fun, then I am energized, you know, to write more of it and add more to that story because it's fun to write. But more often than not, I mean, I used to be more fun when I started writing. I used to write, you know, funny, not stories, but, you know, incidents from my life. And I like look forward to writing more of that. But then as life catches on, you know, I just uh, move more to the not so much fun. And then uh, when there are intense emotions involved in writing, so when it's deep from your heart, then it just takes something from, uh, some, it does take something from you. And I do find that uh, I'm depleted after writing. I'm happy because that's out of me and, uh, and you know, it, on the paper or on the computer. But it does take some of my energy. So yes, mostly longer works because if, if it's short, you know, you're done with it and, you know, you don't have to dwell on it. But the latest one that I wrote, uh, Skin Over Milk, was a longer work because um, uh, as uh, you would know that I write mostly very short fiction. So in short fiction, it doesn't happen like that. I mean, maybe a couple of days or a week, you live with the story. And then even if it's intense, it's it's okay because it, it just lets go of you. But uh, sometimes what happens with the longer work, as I said, it just stays with you. And yeah, it does, it does take out my energy. Well, tell me a little bit then while we're talking about it, about your latest. Okay. So this is uh, Skin Over Milk, uh, started as a flash fiction. So it was just a 300 word story. And what inspired it was rain because in India where I was born and brought up, a monsoon is such a phenomenon that it just keeps raining and raining during that time. And in the house that I lived, water used to come in through the door, beneath the door cells, it used to come into the courtyard. And um, I just wanted to write about that and the experience of, you know, going to school in that rain and then coming back after, you know, we used to drive our bicycles to work, not to work, to school. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then uh, we used to see that, oh, some, so some of the girls or students are coming back because it was a rainy day and the schools are closed. So I just wanted to write something about that. And um, I just started, the setting just started there that, okay, there's a house in which sisters are living, three girls are living and, uh, you know, uh, they're driving, they're pushing the water out of their house in, so that it doesn't flood the rooms and doesn't soak uh, the, you know, uh, all the um, items in their house. But, uh, but then somehow it transformed into uh, um, a very dark story about that these girls were really not allowed to go to school. And uh, so that's when it started like that. And once I imagined these girls there, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of it is autobiographical, but, uh, but, but not really. The setting is, but not much else. So um, then I thought, okay, if it's a life in that surrounding, then I picked up some pieces that I wrote before, some stories, 
And I really transformed that, transformed them into a story of these three sisters who are, you know, burdened by pet, uh, the, the patriarchy and, uh, you know, not uh, treated as well as their uh, brothers. I, I, I don't want to give the whole of the book. No, no, just uh, give but, us a tease. <laughs> yes, so it was, uh, uh, so it was, um, uh, that, that's how this book started. And once I started building it, it came to be 10 chapters and then uh, it became, but, but then I had to also complete the arc of the story. So I had to add more chapters to it. So, you know, to round off uh, the, uh, the, to tighten the loose ends to round off the characters and to show what happens, you know, ultimately, because as in writing, there has to be some transformation, a moment of change in, in some ways, you know, that people change or situations change. So um, yes, that thinking about what happens next, what happens next, that, mm-hmm. that is, is hard work. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I guess most of the writers would agree with that. A longer work just really take energy from you, just take a lot. So what made you start writing in the first place? Like, you know, you had, uh, you had storytelling and reading, you know, and I, I noticed I, I was an excellent reader as a kid, but once it came to pen to paper, it was a little bit of a transformation, um, almost like being a choreographer and then the dancer. Like there's a slight, even though it's not, there's a slight difference. It's all around the same family. How did you start writing? So um, I had never planned to be a writer and my writing started very late in life after I came to the U.S. because I was educated in India and then I got married after that I came here. And, And when I came here, I had a lot of time and solitude and nostalgia. Plus my Mm -hmm. son was very little, he was two years old at that time. So that was also something that I just wanted to, I started a mommy blog because I just wanted to write things about him and the different, uh, the difference in culture, like a a child who would be raised in India, how different, or the words he would learn or the foods uh, he or she would eat and compared to what and how people, how children are brought up here. So those things were on my mind. I just started a mommy blog. And then I, as I said, uh, there was a lot of time at my hands because um, I was not working. I didn't have the work visa. So I wanted to, I just uh, read more. The, the libraries are just so amazing in this country that I just got access to so many books. I started reading more than I used to. And, I, and then, then I started writing. And uh, so immigration was one thing that I used to write about missing home and, you know, feeling that feeling of not belonging, which, which I felt in the, in the beginning, but later, of course, when I made friends, I met people and like, yeah, this is a new world. It's, and, you know, it's, it's, people are different, but still friendly. And uh, so, and, and they are different, but again, similar in so many ways. So at that point I started writing fiction and uh, because I thought that I can relate to people. So I, I, I used to write about American women as well as Indian women because I got to know more about the culture, which um, before when I was in India, I just used to read in books, but I came face to face with that culture. I'm like, oh yeah, this is something really new in my life and I should write about this and stories of people I'm meeting right now in, in this new place. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And you kind of probably have a very interesting perspective, you know, just when you come in, in, you know, I've never lived anyplace else, but literally where I live right now. And, you know, I, my grandmother um, Im- immigrated from Italy, um, gosh, in the sixties. Um, so she went through that. My mother went through that. Um, and they have a very different perspective <laughs> on even how I am. Um, when they, you know, a person ra- born and raised in the same spot in the United States, they weren't. So they kind of look at they, they could give me a different perspective on, on even who I, who I am, which I thought was very, very interesting. I, I can't wait what you've written. I'm really excited. Uh, I'm going to be picking it up, <laughs> your book, and I'm just really excited to, to, to read all the things that you have to say. Um, Thank you. I really appreciate you being here.
Uh, would you mind telling everybody uh, where we can find you and where your books can be found? My book uh, is available on uh, Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, both, of, both of my books, uh, Skin Over Milk, um, is, uh, this is... Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love covers. That's a great, great cover. Love yeah. It. And uh, the, so this is, as I said, is a novella and it's, it's just one story, you know, told in uh, 12 or 12 chapters. And uh, my first one is uh, This More Cells of Purple. And this is a collection of very short fiction, flash fiction. And uh, it's here, every, every story is, uh, you know, just uh, a thousand less than or, uh, or under or just exactly 1,000 words. These are not very long mm -hmm. stories, very short stories, ranging from one paragraph to, you know, maybe two or three pages. So this is also available on Amazon.com. And uh, I have, uh, um, I am very much uh, on social media, not on Facebook that much, but I have a Twitter handle and it's uh, at Puny Fingers. And uh, my website is also sarahspunyfingers.com. And <laughs> What's the story behind that? I, oh, I need I to know. hear it. <laughs> I used to just write funny stuff before and people used to think, yeah, like you have a good sense of humor. So I, I don't know. I was like, yeah, I just write whatever with my, because of, I am a very petite, a tiny person and my hands are very small. They're like, okay. You know what are you writing with these? You just you know you know. Uh, so I, I don't know. I just chose a funny handle at that time. It's continued, although I just don't write funny anymore. I can't do funny. <laughs> but, I yeah, love that. That well, was from that time. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I really thank you for being here uh, with me today. Thank you so much um, for coming to a word. Uh, it's it's going to be broadcast on Wednesday. It'll be next Wednesday, and you'll be notified. Um, about uh, when it's coming out. So I really appreciate you coming. It was awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly. It was so awesome talking to you. Thanks a lot. One second. Let me um, stop the recording. And then I just want to...